hold the earth in our hands and cure it. We have to do this. So I'm really honored to be here today at the Universalist Church to talk to you about the global warming, morality, and energy. And I'm also a member of Citizens Climate Lobby along with Anita and Guido, and we're working on this project. So I am a, a prof professor at Charles Drew University in UCLA and taught chemistry and biochemistry for years. But just this year I retired and actually I loved teaching my students about chemistry especially. These are some of my, my dear students and also Professor Chris Reed here. Um, so the problem is, see, as I was teaching chemistry, I could only devote about two lectures in the whole semester to the science of climate change and atmosphere, and that just wasn't enough to get it across. So I realized that their lives, the rest of our lives, are going to be impacted severely by climate change. So when I retired just last year, I decided I would devote my time and energy as a new career to trying to solve this problem. You know, because see, I, I feel it personally that I know about this stuff and it's sort of invisible. It's starting to happen. You know, you can see it, but there's so many people that don't know about it. So I, I felt a personal responsibility that I need to tell people to, you know, so we can understand why it's happening and what to do about it. Because it's totally doable using our, our resources right now. And so we're going to have to do this. You know, our planet Earth, where we evolved here, it has beautiful clean water, and it has the blue skies, it has beautiful green meadows and grand forests. Uh, this is our perfect home. And yet, now humans have a choice that we can be good stewards of God's beautiful creation, or we can be selfish, selfish exploiters of the earth. And Mark Henson is a great artist, and he is so graphically showing this choice that we have to make. So the earth is polluted by its inhabitants. Some of us are devastating our planet. Just let that sink in. That's that's where we're headed. And you know that the divide between the rich and the poor, this divide is getting larger and larger. And the rich 1%, uh, the problem is that we are you know, becoming greedy and squandering our wealth, throwing it away, wasting it. And the, the poor people don't have enough at the same time. The problem fundamentally is one of, of too much population, but it's also inequitable distribution of, of what we do have and the pollution that's happening. That pollution is leading to climate change. So for instance, one of the effects of climate change, sea level rise, think of half of Bangladesh flooding this is, this is locked in already. And here in India, you know, in Pakistan, all over the world, you see that it's the poor people, millions of poor people that are bearing the brunt of the global warming effects. And it leads to militarization. So there are huge moral, political, and economic implications to this. Pope Francis, in his encyclical in 2015, said that the greatest effects of all attacks on the environment are suffered by the poorest. And a lot of this has to do with, you know, our economic system defines, you know, increase of GDP as being success. Well, that's not good enough. That's, that's leading to devastation, as I'm going to show. So, in order to heal the planet, 
this is going to be a spiritual battle in which all of us have to come together. People of all faiths and together work to heal the planet. A healing presence for the earth. Um, you know, life, life is so powerful. It can come bursting up out of death. And it, although it's very fragile, it can overcome death. Death will die, but life will live. So talking about global warming, morality, and energy of climate change, we're going to focus on three things. The crisis, what's happening, and the science. Why is it happening? And then the solutions. What can we do to end the fossil fuel use and build a new infrastructure of solar energy? And we'll have lower carbon dioxide levels in order to make it livable and habitable for our children. Um, those who are already feeling the effects of climate change don't have to deny it. They're busy dealing with